Let's get right to the tail of the tape. When you take a look at these fighters, basically they've been fighting for the same amount of years, but Frampton, six years older. Gonzalez, though, has the height and the reach advantage. We take a look at the rules governing this fight. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the ref can stop the fight. Fighter can't be saved by the bell in any round. And in the case of a headbutt, an accidental foul before four rounds. Well, this one is a no decision. After four rounds, we go to the scorecards and a technical decision. Both men are in the ring. Let's get the official introduction from Ray Flores. From the Don Haskins Center here in El Paso, Texas, Premier Boxing Champions now presents the main event live on CBS. 12 rounds for the Junior Featherweight Championship. The three judges ringside are Carlos Colon, Joel Elizondo, and Carlos Ortiz Jr. And the referee in charge when the bell sounds, Mark Colloy. Introducing first out of the red corner, wearing black with gold trim. His professional record, 25 wins, one loss, two bouts even, 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alejandro Cobrita Gonzalez Jr. <laughs> Across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white with green trim. As a professional, undefeated, 20 bouts. 20 victories, 14 wins coming by way of knockouts. Fighting out of Belfast, Northern Ireland. Today, he makes his United States debut, presenting Carl the Jackal Frampton. the rules in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands at all times. If I say stop, that means these tools stop working. Punches here and above are good. Punches here and above are good. Touch gloves is for the championship. Good luck to you, man. Alejandro Gonzalez Jr. wants to follow in his father's footsteps. He says, I want to be a world titleist and do it in Texas just like my father did. And I'm just 22 years old. What a time to win a world title if you can pull off this, this massive box. upset tonight. Carl Frampton said, if you're going to be a global star, you got to fight in the United States and do it well. I intend to knock out Gonzalez. Let's see. Round one, Frampton in the white shorts, the green trim. Gonzalez, the black trucks, the gold trim. First thing that stands out to me is the size of Frampton after the weigh-in over Alejandro. I don't know what he weighs tonight, but he looks considerably bigger. Well, he is also shorter, Virg, so he's going to pack that same amount of weight into a tighter frame. That is true. But I'm looking at the pec muscles and also the calf muscles, but we don't know what both men weigh. Oh! And how about Gonzalez dropping Frampton? And he talked about that he had the power. It's crazy because how about that? It's crazy because everybody talking about the Jackal's power, but Gonzalez told us, you know, when I hit guys, they all feel it. Well, another thing Gonzalez said yesterday that he hasn't fought a true Mexican fighter that knows how to deliver that liver shot in that left hook. He said he hasn't fought a true one, and that could be a factor. There is a different style that you have to deal with. Frampton going down in basically the first less than 30 seconds into this fight. There's a left hook to the body. Nice body shot by Frampton. Frampton needs to settle down. He needs to uh, measure his shots a little bit more. He could leave himself open for another uh, hook. Yeah, he's, he came out a little bit too excited. You know, the American debut, you want to impress people. Sometimes you come out a little too excited and your nerves are a bit out of control. Let's see how he settles in as the rounds progress. But Gonzalez. Right hand catches Gonzalez. Just 22 years old. When you're that young and you have a good record, you know, you feel like you feel like you're on fire and your whole career is in front of you still. Oh, another left hook to the body by Frampton. Oh, 
this spark turned into a fire in the first round. Oh, another left hook by Frampton. And Dallas goes out, Dallas comes back with a right. I tell you, man, they didn't get Frampton on Cupcake in his American debut. Gonzalez spoke repeatedly of his left hand going to the liver and back up top yesterday in the fighters meeting. Mentioned it several times, and he's indicating it right here, the way he's fighting. Nice shot by both men. Cabrita is obviously a bigger puncher than he expected. Uh, down in his career. That's the thing. Alejandro Gonzalez is 22. So even if he's brought in as the opponent, it's hard to convince a 22-year-old that he's the opponent. Because he still sees his career in front of him and still sees he has a big future. And he said he kidded around in his career early on. He wouldn't do what he was asked to do. But his last several fights, he realized that he had the potential to take this uh, his game to the top. And he buckled down and he, he did what he's asked to do and settled in, being disciplined in his game. Well, he said, listen, Frampton has never fought, as you pointed Stop. out, Nobody Virgil, fights. a real Mexican. Well, I want to work like the body, then the head. Okay, I love go. liver shots. Nico. And we've nice seen that gentlemen. so far. Yeah, they tried the they they some good body shots, both guys, in that first round, mm -hmm. Brian. Again, Frampton has to settle down. He's, he's fighting with too much urgency. He needs to settle down and realize that this is a 12-round fight, and he has to settle down and pick his shots and relax more and be more of a pro. You can see ringside that gentleman in the white shirt and the great Hall of Famer Barry McGuigan. That's Frampton's manager. Keep him up. Keep him up. As Gonzalez gets at minus. Alejandro Gonzalez is not playing. He is looking for a knockout. He is not playing here. And again, I keep, I keep stressing it. He must have these heavy hands. That he, he spoke to us himself that he's like, I've got heavy hands. They're going to see. Guys, feel my shots. And you can see the way Franklin reacts when he gets hit. He's getting good leverage on him. He's punching with his legs correctly under. And as you notice, Frampton's back foot is way back. So he's right in line for these types of punches he's been hit with. You get Frank to credit, though. He killed him. He's trying to come forward and make the fight. He is definitely coming forward. He said, I'm an action fighter. Kind of like his former manager, Barry McGuigan. In fact, McGuigan from Ireland. He lost his first world title fight here in the United States back to Steve Cruz in 86. There's a right uppercut there by Gonzalez. And Dollar showing us not only can he punch in single shots, but he can punch in combination as well. Raptor has realized now he has to keep his hands up, so he did block those punches very well. We are under a minute in round two. You know, Franklin's body language is that he, he, he it's a bit stiff. Like, he wants to hurt Gonzalez. He wants to get in there and make him feel some power. Maybe, Virgil, you should relax a little bit and just focus on the boxing and setting up the power for later on. I agree with you, and that's what we spoke of earlier. He has to be a pro. He's a pro. So he has to understand he has 12 rounds and things, let things come to him. Yeah. But you don't go into a young man's wheelhouse when he's made up his mind he wants to win. And Alejandro Gonzalez is having fun in there right now. Yep, you just let it flow. You sometimes you just got to let it flow. Don't force those shots. Final 10 seconds of this round two. Time. Cesar Chavez. Of course, we will see Junior later tonight on Showtime Championship Boxing. Stop. Keep him up. Let's go. And he's Keep getting his head pushed go. down. Last time, Alejandro. Last you, time. You heard Colloy, our referee, telling. Gonzalez, hey, it's the last time. I'm going to tell you that. It's a bit tricky, though, because Gonzalez goes going to the body, and sometimes Frampton pushes his head down. So what would be a low blow? Oh, another right. Ends up being, well, it's a body shot. It's not time. What is it? A low blow? You better keep him up. That one was. That was, was close. Right 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 that was pretty close. That was close. That was questionable. Time, we would have to Let's see it on the replay. I really also, would like to see it. Also, some of those shots that are going low, Frampton's pushing the yeah. head down, so they would be to the body, but by getting pushed down, they end up low. I could be wrong, but to my eye, it looked like it hit him right in the midsection. Yeah. At first glance, it looked like a body shot to me, but I'd love to see the replay between rounds. 
I think one thing is important for our viewers to know is that even though Frampton was down in the first round, he didn't show any indication of being too seriously hurt. The right hand was good. Of course, the first one was a little bit off balance. So he still equilibrium wise is in this fight. But he's coming as advertised. He's, he's really putting the action fight yes. together. He faded. But there's Gonzalez now. And a flurry of punches on Frankton. Come on, work yourselves out, gentlemen. Let him go. Stop, nobody punch. Take a step back, Jack. Here's a left hook by Frampton. Good move by Frampton. Frampton showed some tiger there, the boy. Nice when he came into that corner, he showed some real tiger there. He followed that combination and smothered it very well. Hey, the Dallas out of nowhere will just move his hands yes. in combination and dangerous shots. Good jabs by Frampton. This time he's got to get control of the yes. pace back with these jabs like that. He seems just, to be settling down, Paul. Yep. When you bring a jab in like that, you seem to be settling down. Under a minute, round three. Here's the right hand by Frampton. Sticks Gonzalez with a jab. Right hand, Frampton. Sometimes it's just simple fundamentals. Get behind, back behind that jab. Paul, what do you think about Frampton's leg spread so wide for his height? I, th I think it, it uh, slows his punches up maybe by one-tenth of a second, maybe, but he's so fast we can't calculate it. You know what it is? He probably wants to punch so hard yeah. he spreads his legs out. But again, in. The fundamentals are more important. Yeah. Was on left hook. And right there when he missed the right Ten hand was an indication of that. He, his, his back leg was so far back, he had to bring it too far forward so he couldn't get it. Put him off. Let's go. Let's go. This is round four. We've got a title fight. Carl Frampton in the white trunks, the green trim. Junior featherweight world champion making his U.S. debut. It's Alejandro Gonzalez Jr. And there's that jab again by Frampton. Sometimes just break your guy down behind the jab. Don't force any other power shots. Sometimes just be active. Oh, sharp uppercut by Gonzalez. Oh, uh, yeah, right <laughs> uppercut. By this, guy, this guy comes with some shots. And he countered, and he countered the jab. Countered the jab really well with it. Let's go to our unofficial score, Steve Farrow. Steve? I think Frampton's made a nice comeback after that disastrous first round. But one key thing about that first round, whether the judges saw that first knockdown as a knockdown or not, by rule, they have to pay attention to what the referee said and score it as such. So that was a 10-7 round for Alejandro Gonzalez. I think the last round, I think it was a 10-8 round. Did they deduct the point? I don't know. I, I, I saw no signal. Well, Frampton has settled in with a good, accurate jab, and that could be something that's very favorable for him as this fight progresses. This is a great fight. He's showing all the characteristics of a champion. Going against a tough, determined young man who can punch, and who said he would punch. You see Frampton's back on his jab, uh, back on his jabbing, his boxing now. He, his, his body language is a bit less aggressive. It's a bit more in a trap-setting fashion. Great eyes, Paul. This type of fight does favor Frampton. It takes Alejandro down to a lucky punch. And I'm not going to say lucky, I'm sorry, but a, a big punch to win the fight. Frampton's showing skill here. They're not just swing, swinging him. Yep, just starting to vary his, his attack now to the body, to the head, jabs, hooks. He's showing his pedigree. Yeah, he popped the jab, followed it up with a left hook. And I believe his strength is starting to take effect, too. He's a strong fighter. Under a minute Take a here, round four. Take a step back. Let's go. Let him go. Oh, good counter. Counter. Alejandro slowed down quite considerably this round. Big stiff jab by Frampton. So he keeps you honest every once in a while by throwing a big shot. Alejandro does. First time I've seen him just sling his jab out and bring it back quick so he doesn't get counted. Here it is again. 
That jab to change a fight for Franklin. It's the way he's throwing it. Step on that bell. It's a tempo control jab now, instead of an aggressive jab. Let's Listen, go. For our PBC viewers, there are some great fights in the months ahead. Stay tuned, viewers. Franklin, right hand. I tell you, man, I give Franklin credit. He's still willing to stay in the pocket and trade after he haven't been down twice. That's some strong mental, mental stability in there, man. Like I said, Paulie, I don't think his equilibrium got jarred on those knockdowns. I think there were more flash knockdowns, even the right hand, and he didn't see it, but I don't think he was that hurt by it. Here's, again, uppercuts there by Gonzalez. Hey, he's got a very educated left hand himself, is Gonzalez. He does. But Frampton's jab is making the difference right now, and he's working off of it. That's what the pop, that's the problem for Alejandro Gonzalez right now. Yeah, and that's change of fight. Is that, is, is the way he's throwing his jab, he was throwing it too aggressively early on, just looking to step in too hard, and he was walking into the counters of Gonzalez, but now he's mixed it to this different tempos, different ranges, different speeds, and kind of like a pitcher changes up his pitches, it's hard to time Frampton's jab. Gonzalez can't keep him out of the kill zone right now. And that's becoming a problem for him. It's forcing him to fight to defend himself as opposed to do what he wants to do. He's not keeping him out of the kill zone. Frampton is constantly there. Overhand right there by Frampton connects. Yeah, that was a counter over the top of the jab. He's starting to... Well, look how he threw it, Paul. He's, uh, Gonzalez threw the right hand. He pawed it out there. He's trying to survive now. He knows he's in a fight with a real chance. He's taking punishment right now. Yeah, he's, he's, he, I think he's a bit confused now. He's like, man, this guy just turned it around on me, and he, he's trying to figure out what, what's the best case scenario for him. There's good combinations there by Frampton. Yeah, Frampton coming. And how much do you think if Frampton unleashes the floor here? How much do you think because Frampton, you saw how quickly he came out at the beginning of this fight because he knew it, hey, it's my U.S. debut, it's national yes. television, I gotta be impressive. Just got caught. Yes, it's the emotions. You know, he came out way too aggressive. He was a bit tight. You can see the way he's relaxed now. He's just kind of settled into the fight. And again, you can tell mostly by the way he's throwing the jab. He's just more relaxed, he's throwing it in different speeds, different ranges, you know, fainting with it and whatnot. At first, it was just too tight. Paulie right now is becoming a separation of a man from a boy. That's what's happening right now. He's separating himself. But with the punching ability of Gonzalez, though, he's, he's still a live guy in there. He, he's right there. And to me, Gonzalez has not been convinced that he's lost his fight yet. You know, he, he's still alive in there. When he gets close, he, he, he only shoots some pretty good hooks himself still. We're under 30 seconds in round five. Maybe uh, Alejandro made a, a big mistake in the first round. He should have showed his firepower later on and then give the champion warning like he gave him so he'd settle in and know he was in a fight. Oh, here's a left hook by Gonzalez. But I mean, the dollar's still alive in there, guys. Yeah. Well, this is round six of this title fight. We're scheduled for 12. This is the Jackal, Carl Frampton. Takes on Alejandro Gonzalez. Here's Gonzalez. Mounting a rally. Frampton making the second defense of his junior featherweight title. Here's a straight right hand by Frampton. Right down the pipe. And what was so beautiful about it, Brian, he touched his glove, he showed him a touch jab and went right over the top. Great pro move. And that's the thing now, he's varying the jab so well that he's almost domesticating Gonzalez first before he brings in his power, as opposed to early on, he was rushing the power and walking into Gonzalez's own power. Now he kind of lulls him to sleep, jabs him, picks him apart, picks him apart. Once he's got him where he wants him, let's go to the power shots. Picking him spots well. Yeah. Here's a right hand, counter right hand by Gonzalez. At this point, he's showing Gonzalez he might know more, he might have forgotten more than Gonzalez will ever know. So he's touching, he's touching him with all kind of little tricks. Again, right there, he did it, tried it again. I can't sell Gonzalez short, though. I, I still don't see the, the nope. give in him either. He's still, uh, he's still here to win. When, he, when a round opens up and he comes out to fight, you can see the look on his face. He's not, he's not resigned to a defeat. Well, no way am I going to sell him short, and I'm not being pro Frampton. But I'm going to have to acknowledge his work at this point. Gonzalez is trying to figure out how to get back into this fight yeah. in, in the sense of dominance. Oh, one, two by Frampton. Capped it with a right hand. The type of 
punches he's getting hit with and the way he's being countered is starting to frustrate him. He's not going to give up. That's not in his blood. And that's what concerns me. He's allowing him in his kill zone. And he's going to fight because that's in his blood. But he's, he's, he's getting out of class right now. No, but when you see certain times, oh, good shot. Oh, okay. Frampton. You see certain times, certain times guys just get convinced they have lost. Even though they're in the fight, they kind of go through the motions just to finish out the fight. I don't see Gonzalez in that position yet. He might be losing the fight. Oh, overhand right. But Gonzalez is still trying. And again, that's the heart of a 22-year-old as opposed to maybe a 32-year-old or, or, or even older. It's harder to convince younger guys that they're the opponent. You see, Gonzalez has, has been touching Frampton. Oh, another right hand by Frampton. Oh. And Gonzalez comes back with a right of his own and gives him a nod. Well, that's kind of what I was speaking of. Gonzalez has not had moments where he's let Frampton know I'm Frampton still here. Back. He's still Take determined, but he's not letting him know I'm still here. We've come to the halfway point. Carl Frampton and Alejandro Gonzalez Jr. Let's bring in our unofficial score, Steve Farho. Steve. Boy, after a disastrous start, Frampton came alive in the second round, and I think he's dominated since his jab has been a thing of beauty. And the number of punches he's landing that are thudding, crisp, solid, flush shots. That's why he's winning the fight. I mean, he's landing a lot of different punches, and he's doing it backing Gonzalez up and backing up himself. So all Frampton since the first round. It was a right hand by Gonzalez. Steve made a good point. Oh. He's, he's, he's hitting him clean on the back foot and the lead foot. And, and that's uh, really uh, something that uh, Alejandro is going to have to adjust to. He just threw a right and reached for Frampton. With his height, he shouldn't have to reach. He's going to have to start using his jab more to offset Frampton's rhythm. Mm -hmm. And he's not doing that. He's just pawing it out. The thing about that right hand, he tried to go a little change of direction. He tried to get cute, go quick le quickly to his left and back to his right, and then jump back to the left and throw the right hand. But mm -hmm. Frampton saw it coming. Frampton is definitely in a rhythm and in a zone. He's seeing very well. We're at the halfway point here of round seven. Change of shots there. You know, Paul, sometimes it gets in the back of a coach's mind. At 22 years old, do you save this young man who's showing that, that he does have ability to make a go of it at some point in his career, or do you let him continue to take this kind of punishment and dishearten him, and he's never the same? It's a good question to ask. I, I think Gonzalez is still in the fight. I don't think you stop the fight right now, but let's see how it plays out in the next few rounds. Well, we're under a minute here now in round seven. I still think Gonzalez has enough livelihood in, in him left. You just can't stop him at this point. Crowd trying to urge on Gonzalez. These punches are hurting this young man. And, and the way he's like answering, he's paying for everything he's trying now. The way he's answering, uh, he's being real tentative right now. Every now and then he'll crank one, but he's not being consistent with it. Certainly, adjustments are needed. Uh, definitely agree with you on that, Bird. Frampton has had it his way. After 60 minutes only on CBS. This is round eight. The Jackal. Carl Frampton in those white trunks. Green. Trail taking on Alejandro Gonzalez Jr. in the black trunks. Frampton, his junior featherweight title on the line, making his U.S. debut. Paul, well, we can't get, forget uh, Frampton's uh, amateur pedigree either. He was uh, all national, all champion, everything in Ireland with over 150 fights. So we can't forget that. Yeah, and that's always sets a good foundation, a solid foundation for a fighter for his future. Now we're starting to see the aggressiveness Frampton was wanted to show early on, but now he... You've now domesticated your opponent. It's safer to be this aggressive, Verge. 
And one mistake Alejandro was making right now is he's bringing his head with his jab. And that's, uh, that's, that's how he's getting countered so effectively. He needs to leave his head under his legs, but he's actually bringing it forward with his jab and sacrificing his height and bringing his head. Combination right by Frampton. Frampton closing this as much faster this round. It's almost like he's, he's got a, an extra gear in his steps. He's looking for the kill. Here's a left hook by Frampton. The Jackal told me, he says, listen, I've, I've recognized that people, oh, there's a right to the body by Gonzalez. How are you, man? Gonzalez is still alive. <laughs> You just want to keep popping them, but don't trade too much if I'm Frampton. Frampton's not even feeling that right now, Paul. He smells the kill, and he's going in for the kill. He's, he's ignoring that. He doesn't even feel it right now. Gentlemen, navel he's determined to. Navel and up is good. Stop hitting below the belt, okay? Got it? Let's go. Time man, let's box. Mark Alloy telling both of these guys, get him up. Here comes the crowd now, under a minute here in round eight. Oh, right nice. hand by Frampton. Sharp counter over the top of the jab. Again, Paul, he's bringing his head with his jab, so Frampton doesn't even have to reach. He just, just rotates the punch right in. Yep. He's throwing it too lazy, too. He's, that was a beautiful counter jab right there. That's very frustrating to a young man. He's fighting on memory, Paul. He's fighting on memory right now. He's fighting on instinct and memory. Tony Frampton can easily avoid all exchanges and pick a, keep picking his spots. Even when Frampton gets hit, it's, it's not enough now. He's really going to have to drop one on him to change the tempo of this fight. Final 10 seconds of round eight. This is round nine. Yeah, I remember how Frankie told us in the fighter meeting, look, I've seen how guys have come over to the States and made a big impact. Guys like Gennady Golovkin, he goes, I want to have that kind of impact and win over these Mexican fans with my style by the end of this fight. Oh, oh there's a right hand by Gonzalez and a left hook. I went back Frampton right off. Another left hook by Gonzalez. And this is why you don't trade with a live guy. Is this his last or why, though, Paul? It is might this be. Or why you don't hook with a hooker? And why it might be, but why give him the chance? Yeah. Another right hand, Gonzalez. We know he's going to fight back. I always said that, but is this his last round? Is this the one he's going to give up? This is it right here. I'm going to let you have it. Stop. Nobody punch that. We'll soon see. Everybody step before the shoot. There you go. But we got to remember, Fountain fights just as well on the back, back foot, so he's not back. discouraged by the punch. He just reset. And he's right back. Yeah, in the three kill punch zone. combination by Frampton. Right back in the kill zone. Here the cows. Cobra. Combination there. Seconds left here in round nine. There's a couple jabs by Frampton. Nice touches swing. Gonzalez. You see, Frampton's in a very reactive state right here. He's in a very reactive stance. Mm -hmm. So anything Gonzalez is going to throw, he's going to react to it. Gonzalez is probably better off fainting before throwing in this, in this position. You see how Frampton's kind of in that defensive posture, looking at the answer with something hard once Gonzalez lets his hands go. That's why you got to faint right there. 
Again, Paul, the mistake he's making, he's bringing his head in with his punch. And that's causing him to get countered very effectively. And with a lot of punches he doesn't even see because he's trying to go to the body and he's bringing his head with everything he's throwing. Of course, but also Frampton has his timing down at this point. So he makes in those feints. Anytime he wants to throw, Frampton's a step ahead of him. Here's a right hand by Gonzalez. I give the young man a lot of credit. Frampton connected on 35. Of the 68 punches he threw in round nine. At 35 connects, the high so far for any fighter in this fight. Stop, nobody punch. You're not push him down like that, Alejandro. Here we go. Alejandro ready to go for bro broke again right here. At what price, though? take so much of his energy just to put a power shot in right now, Paulie. So if, if he does uh, get a good one through, can he follow it up? Yeah, yeah, fatigue a little bit on the, on the body language of Gonzalez. Stop. I'm sure Frankston is tired too, but he's fundamentally more sound. He's keeping it together. And he's been there. Well, the corner of Gonzalez was telling him, listen, you need a knockout. Frampton's a favorite. You should go on the inside. Keep going on the inside, they told him. We believe Frampton's getting tired. Got to get through that jab to get inside, though. Oh, another counter right hand by Frampton. He just missed the throat hole with that left hook, too. And again, Alejandro falling in with his punches. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Keep him up. Keep him up. Let's go. How about the job Mark Beloy has done here? I mean, he's had that mind. These guys a number of times at the low goal, but they hadn't taken really a point away that yeah, we've seen aside, this far. Aside from that third round. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he kind of had to in the third round. That was a real solid low blow after he just given a couple of stern warnings. Here's he. A right over the top by Frampton. And that was something interesting that Alejandro did. He did counter with the right hand after Frampton countered him. So maybe he feels like I got to counter the counter puncher to give myself a chance to get back into this fight and maybe make something big happen Stop, for myself. But that, in order to do that, he, sometimes you can push and draw something out of Frampton first. Take a step back, take a step back. Paul, the again, the indication of Alejandro's fatigue is after he finishes punching, he bounces two or three times in place to get his legs back under him and get his rhythm back. Yeah, making sure the leg is still there, bro. Great, nobody punch, take a step back. Final seconds of round 10. This title fight between Carl Frampton and Alejandro Gonzalez. U.S. debut for Frampton, for Gonzalez. Second fight for him here in the States. His first one back in 2012 at the Sun Bowl here in El Paso. Much different experience tonight. He had a first round knockout back in the Sun Bowl back in 2012. Yes. And he's going in deep waters here. He's never gone past the 10th round. Well, one thing we can count on across the pond is going to be a lot of back and forth talk. Who's the best? And they'll try to make that fight with Quig and Frampton if Frampton prevails tonight. Let's go back to our unofficial scorer, Steve Farley. Steve. Easy fight to score. Gonzalez did a great job of coming back in that ninth round, but otherwise it's been Frampton all the way. And I, I've been impressed with this kid. First time I've seen him live, and given that first round, boy, Nobody he came back big. And back. And he has go. a champion's Let mentality. Go. Very impressive. Let's He's won every round on my Let's card go. except the first, obviously, and the ninth. Man, and, and for a fight that where you know who's winning the fight and who's controlling the fight, it's still been a solid TV fight, exciting TV fight with some good momentum changes and shifts. Stop. 
Frampton seems content to lay back and counter punch now. I think he's trying to run Gonzalez into something and bring him into a big punch. Gonzalez turning southpaw, now he's going back to right-handed. He's just looking for ideas. Again, maybe one simple idea would be just faint your way in. Maybe you can generate something, a false move out of Frampton and make him pay for it. Well, Frampton is showing his IQ and his experience. He knows Gonzalez has to come if he wants to try to make something happen. And so he's forcing himself, to, forcing him to leave, to leave himself open to try to win this fight and try to take advantage of that. That's why he's fighting on the back foot now. He knows Gonzalez has to come forward to win this fight. Under a minute now. You can see him sitting, uh, turning him and sitting back and waiting on the big punch. Good exchange. Frampton ended it with a left hook. He's kind of punching well. Right there, you seen Beatty and Pauly take the half step back and then yep. beat him to the punch. Yep, still thinking. Mm -hmm. Still Double thinking. Punch. Take a step back. Take a step back. He's trying for the knockout, though. He's trying to run him into a big punch. Oh. I don't know, but the Kawhi was on the other side of that. Man, was that one? Point taken away go, from Alejandro Gonzalez here in the 11th. This is the 12th, the final round. The title on the line. Folks, this is going to be a war. I guarantee you. This is what picks a young man up to his second win. I made it this far. Let me make the most of it. <laughs> And, and the fact that he went and hugged Frampton, he's letting him know, I'm still here. I'm coming now. Oh, oh my goodness. Frampton's still here, too, though. Oh, yeah. Oh. Stop. Nobody points. Take a step back. Here we go. Gonzalez coming right after Frampton. He realizes he needs a knockout. His corner has told him as much. Showing that Mexican fighter's heart and desire. He will not be undone. Despite being behind on the scorecards. <laughs> you know, I think our, our comrades across the pond, they, they have to realize, you know, when, when you're here in the United States, you fight the oh, youngest. Right hand, fight Frampton. The, the, the Hispanics and all the other nationalities fight each other early and learn each other, but they don't see many overseas. So when they come, they don't realize that this style is a killer style. They don't play around. This young man is still pushing. Yes, he is. And he said he wanted it. He wanted to be exciting. Because as he put it, to be a global star, you got to do it here in the States. Absolutely. I got to give Alejandro a lot of credit here. And, and I hope he rebounds uh, from this great fight and don't get disheartened and continue to persevere in, in his craft. And he has a great future in his business. You know, guys, I think he's joined the fray among the top junior fighters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Frampton is an elite level fighter, I mean, and Gonzalez has comported himself, comported himself very well in this fight. So Gonzalez is, comes into this fight on a three fight win streak since his first loss. That was back in April of last year. Alley We're under a minute now. Stop. He's playing is simple. Alejandro's looking for the big punch. He knows he's already lost the decision, so he's just biding his time to get right in there with him, and he's looking for that left hook. That's what he wants. He's positioning his body for that hook. Frampton might need to be careful here as the, the round winds down. Thirty seconds. Here comes the crowd. Frampton just took a look at the clock, so it's quite evident he's tired also. Last 10 seconds. Gonzalez is talking, come on. It's the fight. Good fight, good fight. Good. Great effort from both Absolutely. guys. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judges at ringside, Carlos Ortiz Jr. scores the bout 
115 to 109. And judges Carlos Colon and Joel Elizondo have the bout 116 to 108 for your winner by unanimous decision. And still the junior featherweight champion, Carl the Jekyll Frampton.